Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, how do you think Bluff looked? Much better. Didn't you, darling? Yep, I thought so. His eyes looked more like his. That makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean. Tell me. I meant they don't look feverish anymore. Oh, that Dr. Mixell seems to be a very good man. Mm. He cleared up the infection in no time. It's modern drugs. The average germ really doesn't have a chance anymore. Well, listen to you. Who have you been talking to? Dr. Mixell. He said... Now, wait a there... minute, wait a minute. You're not going to be the kind of woman who falls in love with her doctor, are you? In the first place, he's Bluff's doctor. And in the second place, I'm not going to be that kind of woman. Well, that's a relief. I'm going to have six children instead. You mean we're going to have six children instead of what? Just instead. Of course I mean you, darling. I wouldn't dream of having them without you. Just think, David, Dr. Mixell said that tomorrow we can take Bluff home. It'll be good to have the old boy around again. I've missed him. He's missed us. Do you notice how he wagged his tail and sang when he came in the room and saw it? And did you notice And he how... practically licked the skin off my hand, the big slob. He's got all his strength back. I don't think I'll be able to sit down tonight. Bluff is such a wonderful dog. Wouldn't you think any dog of yours was a wonderful dog? Mm, I don't think so. You know, I love dogs, but there are lots of kinds I don't like. For instance? Well, I don't like angry dogs that growl at people. And I don't like dogs that don't trust people. But most of all, I don't think I don't like snooty dogs. Are you sure it's the snooty dogs you don't like or the snooty dog's uh, owner? Same thing. For instance, not being allowed to see Bluff in the big reception room today. Because that snooty little old French poodle was bedded down there. Well, don't blame the poor poodle. Dr. Mixell tells us that... Mr. Van Allen specifically ordered his dog to be kept in the reception room. That's only because he thought the dog would like it better there. I think you're being very hard on the dog. You should be a little harder on Van Allen. Don't be silly. The fact that Mr. Van Allen insisted on it, and also that another dog be kept in that room to keep his dog company, obviously his dog's fault. I never heard of anything so ridiculous or so snooty. You seem to think that dogs are snootier than people. Much. Have you ever seen two dogs meet on the street <laughs> where they size each other up much more critically than two women at, at a tea party? All right, darling. Have it your way. Except that Now, I... David, don't try to convince me. Because even if you are right, I'll still think that dogs are snootier than people. I don't like snoot. I know by now that being right doesn't mean a thing as far as you're concerned. What time is it, darling? It's about 20 after 5 by that big clock in the building over there. Why? Let's stop in this drugstore here, and I'll call Lottie and see if there's any need for my going back to the office. Oh, David, let me in the phone booth with you. There's not enough room in those booths for more than one person at a time. Hmm. The last person in here was a man. He smoked a cigar. Hmm. A very expensive cigar. You know all about cigars, too. Honestly, you men know more useful things. <laughs> David, if you're not going to let me in the booth, will you at least leave the door open? Do you want the whole world to know my business? Am I the whole world? <laughs> I don't know why I always let you boss me like this. Because it's easier than arguing. Mm. Hello, Lottie. Yes, this is me. Anything new? Nobody called, eh? Oh, that's wonderful. We can go right home. Well, in that case, Lottie, I'll go straight... What's that? Yes, I'll hold on. What's the matter? What happened? Somebody just came in. She's seeing who it is. Any more questions? Oh, I hope it isn't anybody. No matter who it was, darling, that, that would be difficult. Well, I mean, you know, somebody. Why, you little snob. 
You're as snooty as a doll. Well, I didn't mean it that way. Honestly, there are times when you Who'd are... Who'd you say it was, Lottie? Mr. Finch? Reggie! I wonder what he was. He came to see me, eh? Oh, I'd love to see Lottie and Reggie meet. <laughs> Lottie, would you ask Mr. Finch if he could come in tomorrow? Or... Mr. Finch, Mr. Norton would like me to ask you if it would be convenient for you to come in tomorrow. Tomorrow, eh? Oh, I'm afraid that'll be a little difficult. I'm running down to Virginia for the weekend. No, I couldn't possibly get out of that. It's a house party. Hmm. You don't say. Hello, Mr. Norton. He's got a house party in VA tomorrow. Uh, very important, he says. Of course, I suppose I could wait until next week. Uh, Mr. But... Finch says it's not important. He's perfectly willing to wait until next week. Oh, no, no, I'd much rather. Uh, Mr. Norton, he thinks it's an awful shame for you to have to come all the way back here. Yes, tell him not to bother. It's perfectly all right, really. But, Mr. Norton, he says it isn't necessary for you. What he has to talk about you isn't important. Not at all, I'm sure. Hmm. All right. I'll tell him. Mm, yes, Mr. Norton. Mr. Finch. He says to wait. Oh, oh, that's very nice, really. I feel rather badly bringing him back here at this hour. It's not every person who would come back, Mr. Finch. Mr. Norton is a very exceptional person. Oh, yes, indeed. I know. Are you planning to build, Mr. Finch? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Oh, you don't say. Well, Mr. Norton is the man to come to. He's a swell architect. Yes, so I understand. What do you want? A post office? I've seen a photograph once of a post office he made. Just beautiful. Modern life. Oh, yes, yes. That received a great deal of attention. Oh, no. I don't think so. Uh, what? What is it? No. I don't think you are the type. Oh. For uh, what? For a post office. Oh, no, no. I don't think so either. Pardon me, Mr. Finch, but there are a few things we would have to know about you. Uh, uh, your address, please. Finch Hall, Old Westbury, Long Island. No street number? Not necessary. We're rather known around there. I see. A nice neighborhood, Old Westbury, Long Island. Well, if you don't mind... Mm, not at all. Pull up a chair. He won't be long in coming. Thank you. You don't look as if you was in business. I'm not. Oh. I like men who do something. I'm sure you do. Mr. Norton is a very busy man. I'm glad to hear it. He's out right now on a very important job. Really? Mm, something very big. Started on it last Monday. Oh, it's quite new, too. Oh, yeah. He'll have it with him quite a long time. I'm glad to hear it. Mr. Finch, is there anything that you'd... Uh, thank you, but you really don't have to make conversation, you know. I'm perfectly willing to sit here in utter silence. Really? I never cared very much for utter silence. What a shame. Of course, you realize that Mr. Norton's prices are going up. Like everything else. They should. Oh. And he doesn't have time to take on every job that comes his way. No, of course not. If I was you, I wouldn't be dependent on him too much to build whatever it is you're hoping he'll do for you. I'm not in the least bit worried, thank you. I ain't being nosy, Mr. Finch, and I'm minding my own business. When I tell you... Go on, that he... go on. I'm fascinated with whatever your business is. Well, in that case, I'll just let you sit there and think about what I was going to say. Thank you. You know, Mr. Morton, Mr. Norton didn't expect you. It's very decent of him coming back like this. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, look, Miss... Uh, Miss... Uh... McBride. Lottie McBride. Miss Lottie McBride. I realize that for some reason you are very reluctant to have me disturb Mr. Norton. I realize that you are the watchdog and guardian of this office. I realize that you think because I haven't calluses on my hands and I speak correct English that there's something terribly the matter with me. <clears throat> I wish to inform you, Miss Dottie McBride, that you are wrong on every count. And if you can't accept my presence here as a necessary evil of your position, which I must say is an extraordinarily lucky one for you, I'm afraid one of us is going to go. And it shan't be me. Thank you very much. Well, I, ne I never heard anything said more beautifully, Mr. Finch. Then let the rest be silent. Well, Lottie, is he still here? Right over there. Hello, David. Claudia. Hello, Reggie. Did I keep you waiting? I'm terribly sorry. Hello, Reggie. How nice. Well, if they ain't friends. Uh, Miss McBride here tells me you're out on something very important, and of course... We've I just didn't... been seeing Bluff. He's in the hospital, poor Crump. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Well, for some people, dogs are important. Oh, of course they are, Miss McBride. Even I know that. Oh. Oh, David, they're like two poodles at a tea party. Shh. 
Well, Reggie, what brings you here today? What can I do for you? Uh, David, there's a little matter I'd like to talk over with you. I don't like to take your time up. Your watchdog is very reluctant to have me... Lottie, you don't have to protect me from Reggie. I'll protect myself. Ah, Miss McBride, I feel as if I've won some very barbaric contest between us. I hope that you'll be a better loser than I am a victor. I usually gloat for days. Mm, get him. Oh, darling, why don't you go into the other office and see what Reggie wants? I'll stay here with Lottie. Uh, it won't take but a minute, David. It was just an idea of mine. Yes, I want to hear about it. Well, he sure puts it on. Puts what on? Long Island, Virginia, all that sort of stuff. Lottie, he's not putting it on. It's just the way he is. He can't help it. Don't be a poodle about it. A poodle, huh? Mm. Well, I got no use for him. That guy was born with a silver spoon between his gums. And he likes the taste of it so much he wouldn't let go of it in a million years. Oh, Reggie's really awfully sweet, Lottie. It's not his fault that the silver spoon was his great-grandmother's money. Well, I ain't got nothing against him. Only I don't go for snobs or snoots. You know, I don't think Reggie goes for them either. Well, what's he doing here anyway? He doesn't do any kind of work, now does he? I notice his fingers are all nice and smooth, like he has a manicure. Maybe he has. Maybe he never really has done any work, but... If Reggie's here, it's because he wants to do something pretty wonderful. Mm. What could he do? You know, David didn't know, but Reggie's going to build a factory on Long Island for blind men. For blind men? Mm -hmm. Factory specially designed for them where they can have jobs and work and not feel handicapped because they can't see. They'll be able to have jobs, Claudia, and, and earn their own way, and they're never going to have to ask for pity or charity. That's what that character's going to do, huh? That's what it is. Oh, gee. Guess I had him doped out all wrong. I talked to him really tough. I thought he was a softie. Oh, that's gold. Doesn't glitter, Lottie. Gee, I had him figured all wrong. I guess he ain't snooty, huh? It's just the way he talks. He had me fooled, too, first time I met him. He had me feeling I was so much better than he was. You know, Mrs. Norton... I guess the Bronx ain't got no right to be snooty to Long Island after all. Oh, but gee, for a while there, it felt awful good. <laughs> <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you get to thinking that everything on your shopping list is going to cost more than you'd planned, just step over to that friendly red cooler, put a nickel in, and up will come the same delicious Coca-Cola you've always known. After you enjoy the pause that refreshes, ask for a carton of coat to take home. And thank goodness there's one old favorite at its favorite old price, just five cents a bottle. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes.